Hey everyone, Andy here from Imagine Academy. Today we're going to be going over the Medit 710 scanner and everything that comes with your package. Um, as you can see here, we've already uncrated it. Let's go ahead and open up the box. The first thing you're going to notice is a large piece of styrofoam. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. We'll grab the first accessories kit here, and there will be a second smaller accessories kit. Make sure not to lose that. We will also have your quick start guide, and then it's just a scanner. Now the scanner is quite heavy, so we always recommend you have someone help you remove it from the box. Once your scanner is out of the box, we'll go ahead and go through all the accessories. The first accessory we're gonna go through is the screw jig. We'll take this, place it up here. These are the packet of screws for the jig. Now, if we ever forget what each accessory is, the accessories box has a label for each individual item that's in the kit. We'll take our quick start guide, place this off to the side. Here we have our LED protector. Slide that right in there. This is your flex multi-die plate. Here are separate jigs for different types of articulators. We have the tray for impression scanning, your calibration plate, and then our series of cables and adapters. So we have our power adapter, power cable, and then computer cable. The last few bits in here are your flex single die, two spray supports, the full articulator mount, and the USB. Now that we've gone over all the accessories, we're ready to install and calibrate the scanner. Now that we have the scanner and accessories unboxed, let's go ahead and start the install. We have two cables. We have your power cable that gets plugged in. And then we have your camera connection cable. Now it's important when you're connecting your scanner to the computer that the camera connection cable gets plugged into a USB 3.0 or super speed port. Now that the scanner has been installed, the first thing that we're gonna do before we start any scanning is calibrate. You should calibrate your scanner every 30 days. The MeditLink application will give you a timer for the last time your scanner has been calibrated. In between the 30 days, you will want to calibrate any time that the scanner has been moved. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our calibration plate. We're just going to set it along the scan stage. Bottom left-hand corner of the Medit scan app, we're going to click the calibration wizard icon, click next. There's gonna be two options. You can manually level your calibration, have the projector read the QR code on the back of the scan stage, or you can have the software automatically do it for you. So we're gonna select automatic calibration, click next. Make sure that the calibration plate is centered and stable, and we'll click next here. This process should take just a few minutes. Now that we've finished the calibration process, let's go ahead and put away our calibration plate. We'll put this off to the side. And the first case that we're gonna be demonstrating today is gonna to be a single unit crown. I have a quadrant model here that's already been prepped for dies. The main calibration plate that we're gonna be using for this specific case will be the multi-die plate here. This gives us the flexibility to scan the individual dies, the preps, uh, the antagonists all separately. One thing that's important to note is that whenever you're taking dies on and off of the plate, make sure that you're not leaving the actual die plate on the scanner arm, because we don't want to put any excessive force on the scanning arm at all. Now, depending on whether you're going to be just scanning in Meta and sending those files out, having somebody else design your cases, you can set everything up in the Meta Link application. But if we are going to design in ExoCAD in-house, what we're gonna do is set up the case in ExoCAD first. I've already set the case up in ExoCAD as a single unit crown. We're gonna be working on number 19. Again, standard anatomic crown. We're gonna be milling this in PMMA. And we're leaving all of the parameters here at default because we're not doing any implant-based restorations right now. We don't have a pre-op scan. We don't want to do a virtual gingiva and we're pulling our crown to our margin line. So from there we'll click OK. ExoCAD automatically detects that the Medit link application is installed on your computer and it'll automatically give you that icon on the screen. So once we have the case set up here, we'll go ahead and click Medit scan for labs. 
So once we've had our case set up, we're gonna go back here for Medit Scan for Labs and go through the scan strategies. So at this point, we're gonna make sure that we take a look at the model that we have and make sure that we set up the strategy accordingly. The antagonist is pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna go ahead and just separate my models. So we have our opposing scan. Now we're gonna go to our prepared tooth, right? We have our base and we have our prep die. So this looks pretty good. We don't need to do the flexible multi-die right now. So I'm just gonna leave it in as base with the removable die. Um, if we had a solid cast, a solid model, we would then choose a solid model. Under articulator type, we're just gonna select general. Um, we're gonna go into the more complex full articulators later on. Once we have the strategy selected, we'll go ahead and click confirm. The first step here is to scan our opposing. And again, I have my plate off of my scanning arm. I'm going to then just take my opposing model and we're just going to fix it onto our plate, double check that it's stable, and from there, place it onto the scan stage. Double check and confirm the brightness with auto brightness, and then click scan. Now the orientation of your models onto the scan plate is not as important as making sure that the scan stage is at the correct level. So from here, we're just gonna confirm the level that we want the scanner to pick up. It does help the software align your scans if you keep the orientation consistent. All right, this looks good. We'll go ahead and we'll click next. Again, take your plate off of the scanning arm, take the model off. Then we'll go ahead and we'll place our base model here. For this specific strategy, I'm leaving all the dies in place for the base scan, right? Even if your adjacent dies and teeth are in the way of the actual prep, it's going to give us an extra step because we told it that we're working with dies to remove the additional adjacent die and just scan the prep in the following step. So I'm here again, double check that your base model is solid and there's no wiggle. We'll go ahead from there. Again, confirm your brightness. You always want to just double check your brightness every single time, especially as you can see, the models are different colors. We wanna make sure that the brightness has been adjusted to account for that. We can go ahead and click scan once we've confirmed. Again, always double check the model height and confirm. Everything looks good here. What we're gonna do is take our base plate off, take our model off of the plate, and in the next step, we're gonna be scanning just the die. So we're gonna remove the adjacent teeth. We're gonna leave the die um, on the piece of the articulator here just for consistency. But if, let's say your articulator was in the way in capturing uh, the die or any part of the scans, you can remove the die by itself, just build up the putty so that it doesn't, it gives it enough stability and you'll be able to scan it this way as well. Um, for this specific demonstration, we're just going to leave the die in place. Again, confirm the brightness and then click scan. This worked out well for us because obviously there's only one die here, but if you had a case where you had multiple dies, multiple preparations, what we would do is we would use these die holders on the plate. And for example, I'll show with just one. We'll take one of the die holders, fix it into our putty here, and you can add as many as you would need. And then we would take the die, and place it in just like that, right? Now again, if you don't have the die holders handy, you can always just use an excess amount of blue putty as well. The last step in any scan process is to scan in your bite. For this specific quadrant, we'll place our articulator back together, just like that. Now, no, we're just gonna use the same plate that we've been using with the putty. 
But if we had a case that warranted the use of a full articulator that we had mentioned before, something like this, we would actually use the articulator base plate instead. So we would just take the articulator base plate, place that right here, and then take your articulator and center it as best you can along the plate here and scan it this way. Obviously, we would probably want to also remove the pin. We'll place our models on our plate, make sure everything is stable. Don't forget to double check your brightness and then click scan. Once everything looks good, we'll go ahead and click next. The final step in the process is the software will align all of the individual scans together. So you just confirm after each alignment. And what we're going to look for is a nice gradient between your scans. And from there, now that all of your scans have been generated, we're just going to crop them. And then you can send those STL files or PLY files off to the lab to get designed or send them right into ExoCAD to design them yourselves. All right. So we're also going to be covering over how to scan a implant case today. Um, unlike the die prepped case, we're not going to be using the flexible multi-die. We're actually going to be using the clamping stage. This one is beneficial um, when we have full arch models like this. Even though we're only going to be working on a single unit implant, we have both upper and lower full arch models. So um, with this specific model, again, we're going to be setting the case up in ExoCAD first and designing everything in-house. So instead of setting the case up in Medit Link, we're going to open up ExoCAD. We've already set up the patient here. The client's just going to be the demo case. Uh, for this specific implant, it's going to be number 14. So I'm going to say number 14, implant demo. And we'll set up our working tooth first, anatomic crown. We'll mill this out in PMMA. We'll select our shade, A shade. For implant-based options, if we were designing the custom abutment, then we would choose custom abutment here. But if we're just using a screw-retained crown, we'll select screw-retained. Under additional scans, this is where it's going to be important. If we have a removable gingiva like this, we want to include that in the initial setup. So. Under additional scans, we're going to select extra gingiva scan. If we had a pre-op that the client has waxed up or that we've waxed up, we can include that here as a pre-op. Under scan body scan, we have a few different options. Because we're able to scan the model and the model with the scan body separately, we're going to make sure that we have the scan body scan option selected here. We're not doing a virtual gingiva or thimble crown. We're not going to copy mirror anything. So from there, we'll just click OK. The software will automatically mark an antagonist set up for us. We do have our opposing scan, so we're going to leave that as is. And then we'll make sure to mark our adjacent teeth as well. Right? From there, we'll click Save. And then Scan with Medit for Labs. Once the ExoCAD setup has been completed, we're going to confirm our scan strategy. So from here, what we're going to make sure of is that if we have the ability to scan our, ging our gingiva and our scan body separately, we're going to choose the group for scan body option. For gingiva, we're going to say with gum, right? For the opposing, we'll leave it at default and articulator type as general. We'll go ahead and confirm that. Now, when screwing in your model into the clamp, just make sure, usually we like to have the anterior set towards the front of the stage and the two pins towards the posterior section here. And we'll slowly tighten up just like this. Again, as long as everything feels stable, you're good to go. And then we'll gently place our clamp stage onto the arm, confirm our brightness, click scan. Fix our center here, or our height, and confirm. Once this is done, 
Let's go ahead and remove it from the scanner. We'll click next. We'll then place in our scan body. Now the orientation of your scan body is not as important as it used to be because um, we're able to rotate the implant components in the design. But keep in mind that we want the timing indicators of your scan body, whatever scan body that you're using, to ideally face either buccally or lingually, just so that the adjacent teeth don't get in the way of the scan data. Also keep in mind that you want to remove the gingival mask when you're scanning in the scan body so that you can confirm that the scan body is fully seated on the model analog. From there, once that's confirmed, we're gonna screw that in tightly and proceed with scanning. Once we're done scanning, we'll go ahead and remove our stage. When we scan in the gingiva, we want to make sure we remove the scan body and place the gingiva mask back on. Now, you'll want to confirm that your original scan of just the model base did not have both the scan body or the gingiva on it, or you're gonna lose that data when it converts and aligns everything together. So our gingiva is firmly seated in our model. We'll go ahead and place this back into our scanner and proceed with scanning. Once your gingiva is finished scanning, go ahead and double check that you've been able to pick up all the data that you needed to. Sometimes when your gingiva mask is a little bit translucent or reflective, the scanner will have a hard time picking up all the fine details. So you'll want to just add a little bit of CAD CAM spray to your gingival mask and rescan it from there. So the last step in scanning our implant case will be scanning our opposing scan. Uh, again, we're still gonna be using the full arch clamping stage here, and we're just going to tighten it and make sure that we apply even pressure all the way across our model. It's not gonna move during the scanning process. Place that gently into our scanner, confirm our brightness, and start our scan. Again, confirm the model height. All right, just like the first case there, the last step in our scanning process is to capture the bite. Now, if your models were on full articulators, I want to just reiterate that you would then use the full articulator stage here. But since we're just using a couple of glue-in articulators for this case, we're just gonna still use the standard clamps. Now that we have our bite on our clamp stage here, again, just confirm that you have the models in a solid position, applying pressure so that the fixed model on the stage is not moving during the scanning process. And then we'll gently place the stage right back onto the scanner arm. As always, double check your brightness Click scan. We're going to actually make sure that we have it on the bite alignment step. Now the software should automatically grab the bite data from all sides of your models. But if you need to add an additional scan, you can always rotate the image on your computer here and then click additional scan on the screen. From there, all we're going to do is have the software align all of the scans that we've just taken and send that right into ExoCAD. That's going to cover your basic fundamentals on the Medit T710. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us at Imagine USA. Thanks. Mm -hmm.